Hi friends, welcome to Wafa Studies YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to learn how to develop a Azure function using a Python code and how to deploy that function back into Azure portal. So to develop Azure function in Python code, you need to have a Visual Studio code that is an IDE which help you to develop Azure function using a Python code. The prerequisites part, you need Azure subscription because that's where you can host your function once your development done. You need Visual Studio Code IDE and inside that IDE you need Azure Functions extension and a Python also in your system. Uh, and it makes sense, right? Uh, without Python, how I can develop in locally? And also, obviously, when I'm developing Azure Functions in my IDE, I need that extension. And when you install this Azure Functions extension, right, it will actually get you uh, something called Azure Functions Core Tools. So Azure Function Core Core Tools are imagine like it's a runtime to execute Azure Functions. Now you want to execute the Azure Function locally, so you need that runtime to execute it, and that runtime is Azure Functions Core Tool. We can install that uh, separately too, uh, but uh, when you have the Azure Functions extension, it will automatically get you Azure Functions Core Tool. We no need to worry about it. With that saying, let's go and practically develop Azure Functions locally now. So I will go to Visual Studio Code and firstly you, you navigate to the extensions and search for Azure Functions extension at the top and install that. I have already installed it so for me it's not needed but you guys have to install if it is missing. Once you install that, you should see this Azure icon in your Visual Studio Code as well. Now navigate to this command palette by clicking that or you can hit the F1 keyword as well. And here when I use this greater than symbol, I see that Azure Functions related commands. The reason I see it uh, because I have installed Azure Functions extension. So you need to go to Azure Functions, create new project, hit that. It will open a pop-up in your local uh, file explorer where you want to create a project. So maybe I will go to SRC, uh, Python projects. And here, I will try to create a new folder. Maybe I will say sample Azure function. So this is the folder in which I want to create a Azure function. Now it is asking me to select a language. So in Python language I want to develop, I will choose that. And then it is asking me, asking me to select the Python runtime. So I will select the top one. And uh, which type of Azure function? So whenever you create Azure function, there will be something called trigger that will run the function actually. Uh, I will go with the diff, I mean HTTP trigger type. That means I can make a API call to it and it will run it so that I can test as well. So I will choose HTTP trigger type here and I can name this uh, function maybe same thing sample Azure function. So that is the function name I will give. Okay. And now I will hit enter. Uh, this is the authentication part like how uh, when somebody wants to run this Azure function, do you want to have anonymous authentication or functional that means a key or admin? I will go with anonymous that means uh, no need of any authentication, it should work and open current window, let's collect that. When you do that, in couple of seconds, you should see your project created from here. Uh, you see on the console, the project is getting created right now and uh, in, the, in the explorer, you should see all the files come and landing there for you. You see here, we got all these files and we got a virtual environment too uh, where it will install all the required packages. So how all these things came? Uh, because the steps what we followed, right? Azure functions create project that gets all these. And if you observe this file as function app.py, that is the main file in which you will have your function. So let me open that and minimize the explorer here. And now if you can see this code uh, closely, I am importing the Azure functions and I am importing the logging libraries and you see this sample Azure function which has a decorator app dot route and this app is a object of function app class. Right? So be, that means basically uh, this function is going to act like a Azure function and it is going to respond to HTTP request. So that's what it means. Okay. Uh, and it has some logic, basic logic in it, but uh, that particular decorator will tell that function like this is the actual function which will run when somebody make a HTTP request. And uh, if you see the logic inside of it, uh, inside the function, 
basically it, it is it is pretty straight forward the request whatever user is giving if that request has any query parameter called name if it is not there then maybe check it inside the uh, request body okay so take the whole request body and check inside the request body so let me remove the tooltip now if i zoom this you should be able to see so basically i am trying to see the name kind of a key value either from the query string of the request or from the request body anywhere if it is available i am simply printing uh, hello this is http trigger function executed successfully and hello name basically whatever the name i give and the response returns in a http response format uh, if not then it will tell function executed but please pass the name either in a query string or the request body that's what it will try to say a basic i am not going to change any any logic inside of it depending upon our requirement we can change this whole logic whatever has written inside the function okay but the idea is not about a any logic to explain it is about how to create a function in a python and then deploy to the azure portal right so this is fine this is looking good so now now what i can do it is um, i can run it but but one thing to remember you see this azure dot functions having a small yellow color line below that is that 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 means we need certain package to import these libraries and that in turn will get used in our code what are those libraries it will be already there in a requirement.txt file azure functions so when i run this azure function automatically system will try to read the package names from the requirements.txt and it will try to install also i no need to manually install that okay and to run it uh, and one more thing is in the local settings.json actually you you can use this azure web job storage to either empty or you can provide some value there to tell that use the azure emulator locally what is azure emulator means azure functions right whenever it you when you host this in azure the your whole code will go and land in storage account behind the scenes okay so somewhere behind the scenes so azure functions need that storage account kind of a capability to back this azure function to run so but when you are running in locally you don't have any storage account locally right so you need something uh, so, some kind of an environment to back it so that is called storage emulator that will mimic the storage account kind of a behavior locally that is the reason if you see here i have a azure table service queue service blob service uh, running locally also so why it is running how it is running uh, because when i install that azure functions extension right azure function core tools it will get the azure azure right there is something called azure right it it is nothing but like a storage emulator emulator means like mimic it will mimic so it will get it will try to mimic like a storage kind of a behavior which will get in your local that in turns back your azure function to run better we no need to know this that deeply for you to develop but that's how it is uh, if you want to hit a certain storage account in in azure in azure portal from your local then you need to use that storage account connection string here okay so you need to use the correct connection string here so i'm not uh, worrying in much about it so i'm going to azure function app now so now if i want to run this function i can hit the fi keyword or i can run from here but i can also put a breakpoint also if i want to debug so i'm not going to put any breakpoints now so now i am going to hit the fi keyword in my system and the moment i do that if you if you see this right you see it is installing the packages from the requirements.txt so because of that uh, if you see the requirements.txt i have the azure functions package it will get installed and thereby this error will go for this import statement and all the rest of the code will work correctly now if you see here it is starting the azure functions core tools as i said azure functions core tool is the environment uh, in which your function runs locally it's like a azure functions runtime now your function is running successfully and it gave the url also you can test it now this url will respond to http request to get and post uh, and i will try to test it right so what i will do i will try to click this link and it it opened the url in the browser and uh, this this particular request when you open any url in the browser that is called a get request right now i just hit the url i haven't sent anything in a request uh, as a query parameter or as a request body so that is the reason it says that http function executed successfully but pass name in the query string or the request body 
so from where this error is coming if you remember the logic what we have discussed in the else condition that's what we said right when when request to body also don't have name key and query parameter also don't have name key then it will come to the else and it will print that what we have seen in a browser so let's try to pass a query parameter called name so i will question mark name equals to mahir so if i try to zoom and show you this so let me see so question mark whenever you want to pass a query parameter you can use a question mark then key key value is name and the actual value is my my name that's what i'm giving it so now when i hit enter here now if you see the response it says hello mahir the function executed successfully right so because now my logic is able to find out that name key from the query parameters and it is printing that this is perfect fine now my azure function is working locally correctly now how to deploy this into my azure account uh, where i have a azure function so to do that basically you need to navigate to this uh, azure icon so you need to navigate to this azure icon and you need to sign into your azure it will show you a sign in button there so you need to sign into your azure select your subscription then navigate to your azure function app what you have in azure and uh, right click there and uh, hit the deploy to azure function i will do all that steps now uh, but uh, before that let me create azure function in my browser first that means in my azure portal so in my azure portal i have a resource group called mahir rg so let me try to create a new resource here and uh, this is this is going to be a function app so azure function app let me search for the function app and let me hit this create function app to create a function app it will open a wizard for me so i am going with a flex consumption or consumption anything we can go ahead with it and i am hitting the select and uh, i am going to give my function app name maybe sample function app okay so that is uh, this name is already taken so i am saying sample function app mahir now let me disable this sample function app mahir uh, and uh, runtime stack is going to be python okay so that's because my azure function is going to be python uh, and i think that's it so let me hit the review place create to create this azure function app here first uh, we are, we can actually create azure function app from my visual studio code as well but to keep the things better um, so i will create azure function app here inside the azure function app we will deploy the azure function from our local so think like azure function app is a it's like a it's like a stage where multiple functions can host okay so one function we are creating it and we are deploying that into that function app so right now the validation is happening and i have submitted a deployment to so let's wait for the deployment to complete here you see that deployment is in progress great you see the deployment is completed there when i hit the go to resource uh, i should see there is no function here right now but function app is there so now i will go to the visual studio code i see i have connected to uh, azure icon i mean i mean i have navigated to azure icon and i have logged in to my subscription and under the function apps i see my function app is there now what i can do right click on that function app and i can try to deploy this uh, deploy to this azure function so let me hit this deploy to azure function and when i do that it might ask us to confirm whether we want to deploy when we say yes it will go ahead and deploy you see do you really want to deploy so i am saying yes so when i when i hit that deploy it will actually start the deployment process and uh, if i minimize this right you see the deployment is happening and uh, it will take couple of seconds to finish this deployment but basically it is actually behind the scenes zipping the whole code and taking it into the azure function app for the deployment so once the deployment completes the function app url will be uh, from the azure portal we can take that and we can try to use that url to make the request and see whether it is working in a same way like how we have tested with our local hosted azure function app right so when you see the local hosted azure function app what we have tried the url has something called localhost but post deployment it will get a proper name there uh, according to the function app name what we have given so the deployment seems completed successfully you see the success status there now i will go to my uh, azure portal and i will try to refresh here 
to see whether my function will come there or not so let me scroll down and see you see that my function is coming there so when i open my azure function here uh, from here i can test and run or i can take the url from here and then i can make a request from postman or browser whatever it is in this case uh, it responds to get request so even browser call will help so i am taking this whole url now this time i am navigating to this and if you closely take a look of the look on the url so let me you see here okay so oh sorry for some reason i am not able to hold there okay so sample function app mahir dot azure websites dot net right so i will try to hit enter now first it should say function executed successfully but pass the name parameter you see that's what it is trying to say see trigger function executed successfully but pass name in the query string this message itself tells that my function is running correctly i will i can pass the name parameter also to just make sure name equals to mahir and when i hit enter if you see the message this time it says that hello mahir this is a http triggered function executed successfully so that means i am able to successfully create a azure function locally in python code using visual studio code by having a azure functions extension then i am able to run it then i am able to publish that back into my azure portal function app as well so pretty straight forward uh, step by step right you can also try this uh, it is very helpful um i hope you enjoy this video thank you for watching have a nice day